Hey, what's up YouTube? This is Youth Man. Have you ever wondered just how much content actually comes through the Dolby Atmos channels? Well, in this video, we're gonna find out. But before we go any further, if you're into home theater audio and video, hit that subscribe button. And don't forget to hit that bell notification so that you'll be notified when the next video drops. All right guys, about two weeks ago, I had an idea and I'm just now getting around to doing it. I wanted to find out firsthand how much sound actually comes out of and through the Dolby Atmos channels. And so the way I figured would be the best way to find out is physically unhooking all of the speakers. In my theater room, I've got 11 speakers hooked up. So I unhooked all of those speakers, the front two speakers, the uh, center channel, the side surrounds, rear surrounds, everything except for the Dolby Atmos channels. And I'm gonna be using Blade Runner 2049 as my demo disc because everybody always says, and I've watched the movie, but people always say that this movie has a lot of Dolby Atmos content. And so I thought it'd be a great demo to try to find out what content actually comes through those Dolby Atmos channels and just kind of scroll through some of those scenes and show you guys and let you hear firsthand what comes through just those channels in particular. So as we go through these demos, I'll probably kind of give some commentary on what I'm seeing, what I'm hearing, because there's certain scenes that I watched that I heard a lot of Dolby Atmos and there's other scenes that there's very little and there's a big difference in how the sound is perceived depending on volume and I'll explain to you that in just a little bit. So in this demo, I've got two sets of speakers hooked up. The front channels for the Dolby Atmos are going to be the Klipsch RP80FA. Now these are floor standing speakers, but they have the up firing Dolby Atmos uh, kind of built into the cabinet on the top. And so these speakers are designed to shoot sound up to your ceiling and reflect that sound back to your listening position. And then in the rear, I have mounted on the back wall to a uh, Klipsch RP500SA. Now these are surround speakers. They can be used as Dolby Atmos speakers um, and they can be used as height speakers as well, up firing. There's a lot of different configurations you can use those sets of speakers for. So I've got two up firing and I've got two uh, kind of what we call height elevation speakers. And so I wanted to see how does this sound because this is often a typical setup in your home theater. You may not have the desire to cut holes in your ceiling. And so I wanted to find out, you know, can these up firing Atmos effectively give this sound that is enveloping? Does it sound like it's coming from above or does it just sound kind of hokey? And so I'm gonna share with you my thoughts in this video. So enough talking, let's get into the demo. All right, so as you can see here, I've got up front the Klipsch RF 8060 FA uh, main speakers. So the bottom woofers as well as the tweeter are not connected. On the back of the speaker, there's two sets of binding posts. One is for basically the front speakers and the other two binding posts are just for the up firing Dolby Atmos. So in this setup, I've got just the Atmos speaker set up as well as these two rear Atmos speakers. So we'll go ahead and dim the lights. Alexa, turn off theater lights. Alexa, turn on rear lights. Now I'm gonna leave these rear lights on just so I can kind of communicate with you throughout the demo. So let's go ahead and start the video. And I've got it set at zero on the receiver. So that's at reference level. And I'm gonna fast forward the video here because it's gonna take a little bit to get past all the content, piracy, whatever. So throughout this demo, you'll hear different sections to where there'll be dead silence, like it is right now. And then all throughout the movie, they'll start playing this kind of eerie music, like right now it's starting to build. Right now, it's real enveloping. It's 
like right here, it sounds like this coming from up here and back here. speakers from the back to the front. It's funny because I keep looking up. This part, this scene has just this big spacious kind of sound to it. And then there's going to be a lot of scenes like this. Holy cow. <laughs> that was cool. It actually went, I'm going to back that up. Let's check that out again. That was cool. So what happened is the spaceship came, it's dead silent right here. Nice. That was very well mixed. See, that sounds like it's coming from right there. And then there's a lot of scenes like this. There's just no... So basically, what you'll find with Dolby Atmos is you won't always hear sound. So the scenes that don't have things that are flying overhead or ambient noise that they want to kind of immerse you in, you won't hear anything. So right now it's just completely silent. In this scene, there really is absolutely nothing here. So I'm going to fast forward through this um, and I'll just kind of continue to share. So there's really no sound in here. When they're fighting, you don't hear anything. Um, there's no ambient noise, no nothing. So we'll just get all the way through this scene here. Then I found that, you know, certain times like this, you would almost think that you would hear something as the door was closing, maybe just because of, you know, the sound being inside of a cabin. But the uh, audio engineers felt that that wasn't really something that they wanted to add there. So you don't hear that. So let's go ahead and fast forward a little bit further. Okay, definitely nothing in this scene. Okay, now that part right there. So there'll be times that certain things will fly over and you don't hear anything. And you're like, well, man, that would have been a great opportunity to me to have, you know, sound effects there. So let's see if they did it here. See, so they've got this just kind of soft, ambient music playing. So one thing I've noticed with these up-firing speakers inside the clips is I believe because it's sitting inside the cabinet and inside they've got these foam inserts that kind of block the sound, it helps to make it not obvious that the sound is coming from that speaker because it basically blocks all sound. So that's cool. But there's a... Now that's awesome. That was just like a deep coo.
And right now it's just pretty enveloping right here. Now granted we don't have the side surrounds which that would add even more of a kind of a bubble. Now here's another interesting thing that I've kind of noticed. Actually, let me let you hear this part. Have you ever been in an institution? Cells. So right now I'm hearing this. From do they keep you in a cell? Right cells. Up here. When you're not performing your duties, do they keep you in a little box? Cells. Interlinked. So I'm going to fast forward that because they just kind of keep repeating it and repeating it. But one thing I've noticed with the up firing speakers is. Let me back it here because you'll hear a lot of dialogue in this scene. Many options are there. Uh, I'm hearing this out of the rear speakers. I'm hearing that out of those. That out of that one. That out of and see, then it just goes dead silent. It's kind of weird. So, you know, of course, when you've got all nine or seven or 11 speakers playing, you know, there's no dead silence like that. And you don't even notice when they come on and when they cut out. It's supposed to be seamless. But one thing I've noticed is if the, um, if the sound is kind of soft, then you don't hear it almost sounds like you can kind of tell they're coming from the front speakers. But when it really cranks it up, and there's a lot of scenes in this movie, when they really crank it up, I really actually hear it right here. And I, it makes sense because if the sound is soft, it basically almost ha doesn't have enough, for lack of better words, power to send the sound up hard enough to where it reflects, you know, at a good volume at your ear listening you know, level in your main listening position. But when it's cranked up during those certain scenes, it's incredibly believable. See, to me, I would think right here, we would be hearing something, but there's nothing. They chose not to allow the rain, um, you know, to be heard. So there's nothing in this scene. So we'll skip forward a little bit. There's some really, really cool scenes in this movie though. So just about every time he's flying through the city, there's all kinds of Atmos going on. So we'll back it up here. So we'll start right about here. See, that's a loud volume, so I'm hearing it out of what I think is my in-ceiling speakers, but they're turned off. So I'm legitimately hearing it right there. Now the other thing I found is you really have to have these aimed straight at you for that to reflect and it's got to be a certain distance. And so it's kind of that mathematical equation, the angle of incidence equals the angle of reflection. So there's kind of a formula there. I'm, you know, more than likely if I sat in the back row, see that's really loud. But I'm completely hearing it right up there. But again, that's at a loud volume. So we'll fast forward here. During those lower volumes, even like here, you hear a lot of this ambient kind of stuff. So when it's this low, it's definitely, it doesn't sound like it's coming exactly from there. I can almost tell that it's it's somewhere up here. I don't know exactly where it is, but it's somewhere up in this area. 
But when they crank up the volume, that's when I, I mean, my brain immediately says, okay, it's coming from up here in my ceiling. So we'll go ahead and fast forward a little bit further. But to me, this is really intriguing because a lot of guys will tell you that, you know, up firing are garbage and I'm actually hearing them bounce off the ceiling. There's no doubt. All right, so we go from a quiet scene to just really loud scene here. So I'm hearing it from there and from back here. That's a really loud scene. You hear kind of some ambient you know, people talking. I notice in this movie they use a lot of kind of um, reverb in people's voices. With all the channels, I find this this whole movie is very spacious. So there's definitely some scenes that you would think, oh man, they could have really added a nice kind of effect there when the um, aircraft was flying over the top, but. A lot of debris kind of bouncing around in that scene. And then during this scene, you'll hear a lot of the guys kind of talking in the background. Now that's a cool scene, watch this. So what they use this for is the ricochet part or the echo of the, the gunfire, check this out. you're still hearing it kind of just fade. So to me, like this debris right here would be an awesome time to, um, to add that, you know, as it falls over you. But again, they just chose not to. So we'll fast forward a little bit more. So in this scene, you'll hear a lot of people, so there's no talking here, but eventually this guy starts talking. See right here, you start hearing everybody.
So there's just like a lot of echo during that scene. So it's definitely cool how the audio engineers add elements, even right, right. This is a cool scene. Check this out. So this lady's kind of inside this glass and behind this wall and this partition. So let me back up. So as she talks, you can hear her echo. So now she's in this room. So we hear her talk when it's from her perspective, but when she talks here, you don't hear her through the Atmos channels. Yes. So see, that's pretty cool. I like how they did that. So this was pretty cool. This was actually a kind of a creepy scene because I've got the, the volume up pretty decent. It's at zero. And so it's just complete silent. It's all quiet. And then every once in a while that just And so with a subwoofer on that would be a really cool scene. But I've got that turned off. So here we hear the bees, and these bees, I can hear them up here, I can hear them back here, and so they bounce around from channel to channel. All right, so I'm gonna go ahead and stop the video here as far as the demo, and then let's just kind of talk. Let me share with you kind of my final thoughts on this. Okay, so I wanna share with you a few thoughts um, on Dolby Atmos, kind of some things that I noticed throughout the movie. And as I shared uh, through this demo, what I noticed with the up firing is when the volume was kind of low and soft, my ears knew that it was coming from up here. But when the volume began to increase, that's when my brain immediately turned up here and actually sounded like the sound was coming directly out of my uh, two in ceiling speakers right here. And I think the reason is, is because there's enough SPL, there's enough volume to send that up there and really effectively reach my ears. When the volume is a lot lower, it just kind of hits up there and just kind of diffuses and then it's just, you know, you don't hear it. Now, um, I think the up firing Atmos speakers aren't for every situation. Okay. These aren't magical speakers. Ideally, if you can get in ceiling speakers, that's the best you're going to get because the sound is placed directly above you. And so anytime that sound comes from above, it's actually going to come from above. Um, I think the height channels back here do a great job. If I had them up here in the front, they would probably do a, a great job as well. But again, ideally, in ceiling is definitely the way to go. If you can't go with in ceiling, then I would suggest using uh, height channels such as the RP500SA. Uh, SVS has some great um, height channels as well, the prime elevations. Um, but if you don't have that ability and if you have flat ceilings, these up firing speakers will not work with like a cathedral ceiling. If you've got, you know, a ceiling that doesn't have a flat surface, as sound shoots up, it's going to bounce off at funky angles and it's not going to, re you know, return to your ears. It's going to hit the ceiling and bounce way over there. So the sound isn't going to be natural. It's not going to sound like it's coming from above you. And so there's definitely limitations with this. I would also imagine um, ceiling height has a lot to do with that. My room is 13 foot wide. Uh, my room is 13 foot wide by 19 foot deep with 10 foot ceilings. 
And so I can kind of look at this speaker and I, it's directly aimed at me. This one's directly aimed at me. And then the sound, I can even visualize, okay, it's gonna hit about right there and it's gonna reflect the same angle that it hit the, the ceiling at and it's gonna come right back down here. So if these speakers were another, let's say 10 feet back, maybe you got a big open room again it's not going to work as well and so i think for dolby atmos up firing speakers to work it's got to be a pretty specific scenario it's not going to work for every situation out there and so um but what i have figured out through this experiment and through this demo is that these aren't garbage okay up firing at least in the built into the cabinets i haven't taken those down and put those on top and did the the same thing i would expect for the up firing atmos if i put them on top of the uh the speakers is which typically is what you do my brain i think is going to hear them more so because the sound is coming up but it's also going out from there versus with the rp 8060 fa the speaker is built into the cabinet and then there's all the foam around it and so it's blocking any of the sound that's coming towards me and only sound is escaping and going straight up to the ceiling and reflecting off and so i think that's a great design i think there's a value in having those built in and that's probably why it's a lot more expensive um, to have that type of speaker than it is to just buy a module and put the module on top of your speakers so in my opinion, in ceiling would be the best, height speakers would be the next best, built into your cabinets would be the third best, and then if you, know, you don't wanna spend the money on that, uh, and, and this is your last resort, and then take a height elevation and place it on top of your speakers and use that as up firing. Uh, but honestly, man, I've been really impressed with the sound, the Atmos sound that has come out of these. Uh, for my room in this configuration with these speakers at this angle and this distance and my my ceiling height it really works in this room uh, but again it may not work for every situation it, well I know it won't work for every situation um, and, and Dolby even kind of lays that out if you've got cathedral ceilings if you got non-flat surface it's just not going to work as an up firing. And so you definitely will want to go with either an in ceiling or a height elevation. Well guys, hopefully this video has been educational as well as helpful to you uh, to show you what actually comes out of a uh, Dolby Atmos um, channel. You know, what sound effects do they put through there? How much content uh, do we uh, see? Now, some movies, um, you know, I've got a couple other ones here that I'm gonna try just later on. A Quiet Place, Ready Player One has got some a great action scene. And so I'm just curious on my own to find out, you know, what all is playing through, say, a big action scene. How much of that do you hear? Um, but. Uh, but overall, man, like I said, I've been really impressed with these. I think it made a great immersive experience. Then you add those side surrounds and back surrounds, and then your front speaker and center speaker. And definitely, I've heard the whole package, and this system sounds fantastic in my theater room. And so, guys, I'm going to wrap it up here. Hope you have a great week. God bless you, and we'll catch you in the next video.